Alright, hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of uh, Grey J Wall, The Sound of Revolution, Beat Poems and Anxious Gasps. I will actually hopefully be coupling this with a review of another poetry book that, right, we've got this problem where my TBR pile has got so large at this point that, that I don't know where this other book is, so I need to, like, dig through it and find it, but, um... We'll, we'll move on from that. But both of these books were sent to me very kindly by Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Poetry Press, so thank you very much, Isabel. And um, I think with poetry collections, what, what I normally do is just read some poems out, because I think that's the best way to give you a feel for whether you're going to like it or not. So I'm going to read some of the poems that I enjoyed, and then I'm going to share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. Okay, so The Sound of Revolution. The sound of revolution is not the crack of gunfire. The sound of revolution is not a switchblade swish. The sound of revolution is not the screaming on the streets or the bullhorn instruction to clear the area. The sound of revolution does not reside in the commons or the lords or down at speaker's corner. The sound of revolution cannot be found on a TV channel or a radio panel show. The sound of revolution is not in a thrash guitar or a didgeridoo, or a poetry slam or in spoken word. The sound of revolution will not be heard on Mumsnet or YouTube or Soundcloud. The sound of revolution is not one voice or a choir of protest on Parliament Square. The sound of revolution can be found if you place your ear to the ground and listen in silence, as a small green shoot cracks through the expanse of sun-dried soil, as a gasping fish swims beyond the slip of ill-spilt oil, as the birdsong returns to a summer's morn, and in your breath you hear the sound of revolution. And we have La Contemporaire. Well, I don't know what language this is, but if it's, it's not French, but la, for the art, would have a silent T, but then it's contemporanei, which I assume is Italian, so I need Charlie Heathcote here to help me. But it's, it's called la contemporanei anyway, I guess, if I pronounce it French and Italian style. Skater kids and street sleepers, pushers and cocktail tourists, some damage, some destitute, some just killing time. Hobo and boho, side by side, in the shade of the angular art house. Some will be back tomorrow. Some are just passing through. One may be unaware that his time is nearly up. Another may get clean, or find a god tomorrow. All are connected in this moment, to the concrete and the sky. Marty's writing postcards to friends afar, as a gentle breeze pushes an old napkin past the cafe door. This one's called anti anti folk Probably my favourite of the collection, actually. So this guy comes up to us after the show, and he's like, you guys are cool, I dig that anti-folk sound, so lo- so lo-fi, DIY, and I'm like, man, we're so beyond that, we're anti-anti-folk, no fi, DI Joe, we gotta go, so low, anti-folk was last year, baby, this is now, get with the scene. I could sense his consternation, he pondered, then he spoke, but wouldn't anti-anti-folk just be folk? Some people. We live for cheap supermarkets with international stock, the reticent middle class of Middle England. We worry about the wars and the parking charges, the discriminatory nature of our government's bills. We squabble when the money is tight and bicker over our working class ancestry. We are civilly disobedient when the situation calls, and obediently civil to lax waiters and traffic wardens. We cry in private when our loved ones die from inexplicable cancers, and look into the eyes of our pets for condolence. We have friends on the continent, we are citizens of the world. Yet we avoid certain streets in our beloved hometown. The fairy lights in the garden provide a grotto to no god, whilst our scented candles enhance our well-being. We contemplate the gym, yet it remains a foreign land, part-time Buddhists with Catholic guilt. We only discuss the other faiths behind closed doors for fear of offending, or being considered politically incorrect. We log on to our social media in fear that the virtual world might move on without us. Hashtag, hashtag LOLWTF. Pills to keep us awake and pills to help us sleep. Therapy is the new normality, caffeine free and embracing our anxiety. Our illness is never discussed, our distress remains publicly concealed. We are 21st century alone and dying history in the making. A minor experiment in paranoia and as normal as the rest. Our past rewritten by paedophile TV presenters. Press delete, erase, eradicate. Press delete, erase, eradicate, reinvent. We are okay, can't complain. The future is bright, the future is unwritten. Turn off the lights when you leave. Life is a game show and love is the prize. We are all extras and the camera is rolling. Everything is available on catch-up freeview and pay to play. Photoshopped and auto-tuned to within an inch. Text me sometime. Smiley face. Uh, L-U-V-X, I guess, all capitalised. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, uh, this one is December 20th, 2015. 
I'm sitting here as it gets dark outside, listening to Dan Byrne, reading Bukowski, mint and spice tea, cool menthol vaping. My mind goes back to that little restaurant in Mexico City with the wrestling masks that line the walls and the old luchador proud and cheery every morning when I sat for eggs and coffee. There have been two stabbings in town this year. The second was a kid, well known and well liked. The railings there hang heavy with rain soaked bouquets and little messages in plastic bags. The first was less reported. I'm not sure whether he lived. Apparently it happened just outside the beehive, but the guy made it all the way down London Road to the petrol station where the kiosk attendant called for an ambulance. Ros said that the next day, when she came to open up the farmer's boy, she saw the trail of blood still on the pavement running all the way down the hill. I never told the Mexican wrestler about the pain I was feeling at the time, just smiled and thanked him each day while the poor men around the town hall stood high and tied on crucifixes in protest at the laws that were bleeding them dry, as mariachi bands buzzed by in broken down old beetles on their way to birthday parties and funerals. I never saw any more in the papers about that first stabbing, no word of who he was or what it was all about. Next week is Christmas, and I wonder if he'll be somewhere smiling with his family and celebrating with friends, glad to be alive. And I wonder if the old luchador will still be there serving eggs and coffee. I hope so. And this one is uh, for Biggie. This is, today I was a lion. Today I was a lion. I lay out on the lawn with the cat by my side and together we were a small pride beneath the searing heat of the Serengeti. Well, South Hearts to be precise. But it was nice in our jungle garden home. And we would like to reassure you that no antelope were harmed in the making of this poem. And then there is a little photo of his cat as well. Focus, 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 focus. There you go. Focus, focus, focus. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Grey J. Wall, The Sound of Revolution, Beat Poems and Anxious Gasps. I will say I thought I was going to like it more, but that's just because I'm pretty much beat poetry mad, you know? So I think the title set up a certain expectation that, I don't know, it, it, I mean, it, it was inspired by Beat, sure, but I don't, I don't think it was like... Uh, it didn't hit me as hard as some of the actual, you know, original frontline beat poetry, but then what what can you expect, you know? I would be interested to see some of him doing some of his readings. Uh, I think he's got a really cool author bio here as well. Uh, Gray J. Wall is a poet, lemographer, and songwriter from St Albans, UK. As a regular performer at venues and festivals, both at home and around continental Europe, his work is often inspired by those travels along with global issues, anxiety, red wine, and cats, which I think is a cracking bio. Um, and again, I think with beat poetry, really, to enjoy it to its full extent, you really do need to see it performed. So I think it'll be interesting for me to now go and look up some of his work and to see if it's different to how I kind of read it myself. Um, but yeah, overall, I did enjoy it still. I gave it like 3.75 out of 5 and um, pretty good if you're into that sort of thing, I would say. So yeah. I'm going to shoot the outro now in case I can't find the other poetry book and I'll just do that as its own video later. So... That is what I thought of The Sound of Revolution by Grey J. Wall. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.